Keeper of the Light by Bev Cook. The road to sainthood takes a lifetime to travel. In the fourth century, Christians are labeled enemies of the Roman Empire, hounded, arrested, tortured, and executed. Macrina and her husband Basil, once wealthy Christians, flee with their small son to the mountainous forests south of the Black Sea. There, Macrina embarks on a seven-year journey of unexpected tests and trials that will take her through a harsh and hungry wilderness pilgrimage, only to plunge her into poverty and danger on the streets of Neo Cesare. So begins Macrina's adventure in faith, as she undertakes the process of becoming one of the most influential women in sacred history, the mother and grandmother of saints. Very little is actually known about Saint Macrina the Elder. In fact, if it weren't for her illustrious children and grandchildren, and the things that they wrote about her, it's likely that today we would know nothing at all. We know that she was born some time before 270 AD. Her spiritual father was Gregory the Wonderworker, who was credited with converting most of Neo Cesara, capital of the region of Pontus, near the Black Sea in what is now Turkey. From St. Gregory, she learned a great deal about the faith and honored his memory her whole life. It's said that she kept his relics in a chapel at her state at Anessi. Macrina lived in Neo Cesara with her husband, whose name we don't know. We aren't sure what happened to him. He may have been martyred, but there's no evidence to indicate when or how he died. We know that they had one son they called Basil. During the persecutions of the Emperor Diocletian at the end of the 3rd century and beginning of the 4th, Macrina's household escaped into the forests and hid for seven years. At one point, they almost starved to death until God sent a deer to feed them. After that, he sent hinds and goats from the mountains to keep them alive until they were able to return to their home. St. Gregory of Nazianzus related this story in his elegy for his close friend and Macrina's grandson, St. Basil the Great. A short time later, they were stripped of all they owned. Relying only on God's grace and mercy, they refused to abandon him and their faith, and lived in almost total destitution until Constantine became emperor and issued the Edict of Milan in 313, which legalized Christianity. Because of that edict, Macrina and Basil had their property restored to them. Macrina was very close to her family and spent a great deal of time with them. It's probable that she lived with them for at least part of her life. St. Basil, in a letter to the officials of Neo Cesara, mentions that he was raised by his grandmother, Macrina. Certainly, she had an enormous effect on the oldest four children. Her eldest grandchild and namesake, St. Macrina the Younger, was raised and educated by her mother and grandmother. She, in turn, helped to raise and teach her brothers and sisters. At about the time of St. Macrina the Elder's death, the granddaughter was betrothed to a man who died of an illness. The younger Macrina declared herself a widow and swore never to marry. Instead, she began to live a monastic life and gradually transformed her mother's household into a monastery. She stayed close to her brothers, St. Basil the Great and St. Gregory of Nyssa, influencing both of them throughout their lives. Now Cradius followed his sister and abandoned a promising career in law to become a monastic at Anessi, looking after a group of elderly, infirm people not far from the family villa. A hunting or fishing accident in the spring of 355 or 356 cut his life tragically short. After the death of his father, sometime after 340 AD, Basil finished his education in Caesarea and Athens. He abandoned his studies in Athens to return to the family estate and take up a monastic life following in his sister Macrina's and his brother Necratius's footsteps. He traveled and learned from the other monks. He was ordained a priest and became the Bishop of Caesarea. He wrote a rule for monastics, which is still adhered to by monks and nuns today. Through his writings and works as a bishop, he defended Christianity against the Arian heresy. St. Gregory of Nessa defended the Theotokos at the Council of Antioch and he also stood for the faith against the Arian heresy, and most notably at the Council of Constantinople in 381. The righteous Theodosia, one of the younger children in the family, also became a monastic and lived with her brother Gregory in Nyssa for a number of years. 
Macrina's youngest grandchild, Peter of Sebastia, is also recognized as a saint. Saint Macrina the Elder handed down the faith she had learned to some of the most brilliant and faithful members of the church, whose works still influence us today.